Um, I think we've got Jordan in the house. Jordan is in Swaziland somewhere. He's no stranger to the show. He's been on the show before. Myrtle and I met him in Cape Town as he was part of Canatech. And he joins us now from, I have a funny feeling, like the middle of nowhere in Swaziland. It doesn't, <laughs> are you in a city somewhere? Hello, man. How are you? Hey, man. I'm doing well. Um, no, I'm outside the cities. I'm actually kind of deep, deep in the rural area. Um, mostly, like, there's not even law enforcement out here at the moment. Like, it's kind of that rural at the moment, more on the south side of the, between uh, Manzini and the Bay. Can't be too specific, but I'm out there. <laughs> okay, and it, but now, is this like an extension of your plan? Didn't you just go there for a couple of weeks? Because everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I was actually only supposed to be here uh, until the like, 19th. And then Israel got locked down. My apartment got uh, basically said I couldn't quarantine there. And then uh, my visa, I, I wasn't able to go into South Africa. So I kind of just got stuck in Swaziland. So I'm just kind of like riding it out on, on a farm at the moment. Like I've got decent Wi-Fi or data at the moment. Uh, I'm working remotely. I've got good cannabis. Like it's not actually the worst thing in the world because it's it's kind of like being on a farm, like you back in the states, like Oregon or California. Like I've actually got better signal here than I have at any farm back in like California. Ah, <laughs> in Swaziland, eh? That's a very cool thing to hear. That's a very cool thing. So, um, are you um, without get, giving away too much? Are you actually in a growing area? Are you up in the mountains somewhere? Oh, I'm not. No, I'm not a like. It, it, there's growing that goes on around, like up in the mountains nearby. Like it's kind of a the community I'm in. Uh, it's it, it's known not it's not known for cannabis, but the people that do in hip like hip this area up in the mountains, they do have grows and whatnot. Almost ne anywhere near like a water source or a stream or anywhere that's just like you know big enough to put a little plantation at. Uh, they'll put one down. I actually like uh, about four months ago, I took an ultra flight over. All so, the rivers and the tributaries, you just can follow the patches as they go down the river. So, so, so more like uh, gorilla grows. Like, gorilla grows, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they make, they make cave, They take very good care to make them small enough so they can't see them from the helicopters overhead. Right. So, so they try to hide them in the bush, kind of like they used to do, like in the Federal Reserves, like in America and whatnot. Very similar style. Uh, you got to you know, most places take anywhere from like. 30 minutes to two hours, four hours to get to on foot. And most places will have somebody that's actually like sleeping on location on these like little uh, gorilla growth. And um, we heard last week from one of our guests that was in Soweto that um, there's an abundance of Swazi on the streets in, in Johannesburg's township. So the wheels still go on. You've heard stories of um, our lockdown in South Africa. It's particularly brutal. Um, there's a lot of physical harm done to people, psychological harm. They have, they've had all of their vices taken away from them, and you've heard all of this shit. Is it the same in Swaziland? Are they taking it as seriously there? Um, it, it's starting to get pretty serious, actually. Uh, the, like the like the, the partial lockdown started, I think, on the twenty like seventh, and then a week later, the full lockdown went down. Um, and it's been kind of just like a slow implementation of like like social distancing and a few other product like things. Cigarettes are still being able to get purchased. We haven't run out of rolling paper yet, although I haven't been in town in about a week. Um, like the military and the, the police are kind of like they're, like after the like the actual lockdown went into effect, I traveled in town once, and it was pretty brutal. And I've read a few, heard a few stories about other things going on in bigger cities and whatnot, like as far as the police being bored. When you walk by and you drive by, the cops aren't really doing anything, at least on surface level. But then there's been stories of like the cops like making people do push-ups at the, the taxi stands and whatnot, guys that don't have a reason to be out and about. I don't drink, so I don't know what the alcohol situations. I know, but I know ethanol is really hard to come by at the moment, just for any kind of like RSO, like or fixtures, like extraction. <laughs> but everybody's kind of doing their own thing at the moment. I mean, it's just the area I'm at, people are kind of like, there's not really law enforcement to deal with, so people are moving pretty freely. But once you start to get more towards the center of town, that's when it starts to get very, like, fashy, I would say. Uh, being a white dude, like, people don't really mess with me that much, like, when I go into town, but I can definitely understand how the cops get bored and start harassing people who don't have a reason to be out and about. We're taking it quite serious up here. Uh, a lot, it's affecting a lot of people. A lot of the service industry has been laid off. Well, like there's no tourism. Most of the, the backpackers and uh, like uh, hostels have all down. There's I think one hotel open at the moment. A lot of people got sent home. 
It's interesting, though, with it being a monarchy, uh, people do have a lot to rely, like, fall back on. Most people have, like, a plot of land or some kind of farmstead, ah, so it's see. really, like, curbing down what, like, what could be a potential, like, homelessness issue. But still, like, with the lack of infrastructure and everything else, like, most people aren't getting tested here. So even if you do get sick, chances are you won't be able to go get a test. And if you do, chances are you at more risk of going to the hospital to get a test than you would be than anything else. And then you also have the, you know, you kind of have the worry, like, there's been mass text messages being sent all over saying, if you or someone you know has COVID-19 or you come into a contact with them, please inform us now. And I don't know, it just, it started bringing up some weird feelings about, uh, like, uh, how they're going about searching for, like, you know, uh, people that are possibly infected. And, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the, the king might be infected as well. He might be sick. Oh, it's kind of like the shit. river mill on the street. Like, Out of its anger. So angle. that could... That could lead to some interesting changes. Um, yeah, look, all the, all of the really famous people that got sick all got through the other side of it. That's the other weird thing about it. How many really important and up the ch food chain people actually ended up getting it so far? It's all very strange. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the first round of tests they did here in East Bahini, they did, it was only like three, it was like between 300, it was like 368. And with that number, it, like, they guessed that it was mostly government officials in the royal family, and those were taking a week to get back. Supposedly, they've set up a medical center in the Manzini to do more rapid testing, but honestly, most people are scared to go anywhere or do anything. But it's kind of weird, because when you get out to more rural life, it, it is, like, life as usual, just with a little bit weird understanding that we're not supposed to be, like, talking to each other. There's not a lot of Wi-Fi or data, like, infrastructure out here, so most people are kind of not really clued in to why we're doing all this at the moment. Like it, and so it kind of took on a, like a, a like a like a rubber band like wave of people like understanding what needs to be done and some people taking it seriously to now being taken fully seriously. When you do go into town, everybody's lining up, everybody's to keep maintaining six feet distance or a meter distance. People, most people are using masks of some sort. Like everybody looked at me like I was a weirdo because I was running around with a face mask two months ago. Just because I knew I, I possibly could have been a carrier for it. But the thing is now if people are like wise enough or at least word spread. Like because with the with the the complete lockdown, that's actually when the chiefdoms and the local like uh, law enforcement was to actually enforce the social distancing and the self quarantine. And uh, like as far as extension, they have no idea. There's no they did like with your with the South African president saying that there's a two week extension. Most people up here are just assuming that it's going to roll over for Swaziland too. Okay. And we don't know even if South Africa opens up if Swaziland is going to open up as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks. But, like, yeah, the gun's just flowing. Everything I've heard from America, like, the cannabis people are all working over there. Like, central workers in Colorado and a few other places, it's really good to hear. Um, like, Israel, the brother, everybody's doing delivery service in Israel. And so basically, they basically they've, uh, they've had their outfits and their costumes as delivery drivers for the last few months anyways. Even with, like, the, uh, the, the Uber Eats bag with the dropout bottom for packages. So they've already, they've already <laughs> know how to do this for a long time. People have been, like, already adapted to this. The fact now that South Africa is getting all used to this this, this, this uh, delivery service infrastructure will be interesting to see as well. Uh, there's not really that much of a need up here for it. Most people just get their local source. Like, I've had no problem getting anywhere from 50 to 200 grams at a time just from people that grow in the area. But, you know, that's Swaziland for you. But that must so, be that must be a, a ridiculously cheap price as well because it hasn't got on a truck. Oh, it has. There you go. Nice. Oh yes, yes, sir. Oh yeah. I mean, I think I think it was. I like it was. It's like this bag. I think I paid five hundred rand for it, and so that was like came out to like ten euro cents or less uh, a gram. So for me, like I was like I'm, I'm happy with that because I'm used to like. Like Ukrainian weed that costs like thirteen to sixteen dollars a gram, or you know, like Israeli weed that costs you know twenty twenty to twenty five dollars a gram. Three hundred you know, shekels a gram. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm from Seattle, right? We can get good indoor for anywhere from two to five dollars a gram. So the fact that I, I have ever have to pay more than five euros a gram, I get upset, especially if it's not like quality stuff. At least this stuff, it's like high cross mixed grade. It's like probably between like like nine or ten percent THC, like a really probably high in THC weed. And it's got like minimal seed, which is for me, I just want to grind up and not have to worry about. Right, you and get blazed up and yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to get high. Like, that's the big <laughs> thing. Like, I'm just trying to roll joints, you know? So the fact is, like, I don't need stems and I don't need moisture and I don't need seed. As long as it, that comes through, I'm happy to smoke too much outdoor. I come from the 
the Oregon and the California, like, uh, you know, scene. So for me, like, I'm used to doing it, having good sun-grown cannabis. Right. The only problem is none of these people up here pull their males. The biggest thing <laughs> is cross-pollination is such an issue. You, I have yet to find any bag without seeds. Like, I can get a half kilo for maybe, like, 100 or 200 rands, but it's going to be probably 50%, 60% seeds. Like, I've even come upon grows out here where, like, they have fully ball sack pollinated males just sitting in the females, right? And nobody just, like, everybody just kind of looks around at each other. I'm like, you know what to do with this, right? We need a plastic bag and try to explain, like, like how to contain the pollen and whatnot and how to dispose of it. Everybody looked at me like I had a dick on my forehead. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like look at this crazy guy putting a bag over the cloth. What's um, going on? Well, if you think about it, how much you could get, what, $3 each for one of those seeds in Humboldt? Just because of that exotic? Hey, that, it's just that the thing is, that, like, the Europeans that came through here about 10, 11 years ago, as well as some of the South African growers, they released a lot of genetics up here that just, like, went all over the place. So everything's like a cheese or a scum crust of some sort, and it's been inbred or multi-bred with itself. But what we've been seeing a lot of is, like, autoflowers, feminized and autoflower genetics, like, especially from, like, Ukraine and, like, coming out of Spain, being mixed into the local population. A lot of the local growers just want those auto those auto flowers because if they can get it like quick enough time, they can get uh, a full crop in and under from seed to finish under like 10, 11 weeks in some cases, depending on the strain. Jesus. Right. And for them, it's just time in, time out, like sea of green method. They're just trying to get as many plants in as possible, flower them as small as possible, and then just go. Like the concept of cloning is completely foreign up here. Everybody just runs some seeds, man. It's crazy. Sounds great. Sounds absolutely great. Um, does it affect your visa, the fact that you can't leave? You haven't overstayed or something stupid like that. Are they going to nail you on something African and bizarre? Um, no comment this time. Uh, <laughs> that's being addressed at a higher level than a paycheck that I'm allowed to speak of at the moment. Uh, no, it would, well, to be, I'll, I'll just be honest about it, because the thing is, like, uh, overstaying your visa in South Africa, which is what, I was coming to Swaziland to go up to Israel after that. I was going to come back uh, for the expo on a seven-day visa. That's what kind of cut me up, is because that, I couldn't even, now, once Israel crossed me off the list for being able to fly there, there's no point to it's, be locked down in Swaziland or be locked down in Cape Town, right? That was my two possibilities. So, for me, I, I thought Swaziland would be a safer issue. So, I called the American Embassy... And the, and the guy basically just told me, he's like, you know, uh, if you overstay your visa, it's a $30 fine, American, right? But if I overstay my visa in South Africa, it would have been possibly a five-year disembarkment for me. <laughs> so I went with a smarter option. Like, I may be, like, 10 kilometers from the American embassy. Like, I got, like, a squad of Marines, like, that are still on duty and the, the American embassy there. Like, they, they, they're just riding it out, too. They think Swaziland's safer than almost anywhere else. And every South African I've talked to has told me the same thing. I'm like, because there was kind of this panic moment, like, oh, shit, I'm actually, like, stuck in Africa, like, during this, like, actual pandemic. And then it was like, oh, yeah, no, it's not too bad, actually. It's probably one of the safest places. I'm rural, like, away from other people, good source of food, cannabis. Like, yeah. I'm set up yeah. better than most people, to be honest. And I have room to run around. So for me, it's just uh, like I, I, I'm working on the process of dealing with the paperwork. But yeah, technically at the time, it's like uh, like I think there's allowances for visa overstays at the moment just because they've allowed it for South Africa. I think like special circumstances will, like will explain this. I mean, I don't think anybody wants me going anywhere. Like, the whole idea is to stay in place, right? So I've been staying in place for like two months now and I'm going to stay in place <laughs> another probably two or three months. <laughs>